Okay, welcome to part two. In this part, we're going to take off the um, uh, some of the components on top, the MAP sensor, coil assembly, uh, some tubing. Uh, we're going to get the EGR valve, which is kind of a toughie. Um, and um, with that complete, then we're going to be pulling the uh, upper manifold, sometimes known as the intake plenum. We're we'll pulling that off and uh, going to have a sense of some progress. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I was planning on taking out this this uh, EGR uh, valve here. Um, but the way this car is, you know, with the small opening in the hood, there's very little room for me to get at the bolts. Um, so I think what I'm going to do first is take out here the map, map sensor, manifold absolute pressure, and the coil assembly. And then maybe there's going to be a little more room back there to get at these two 10 millimeters. So removing the map sensor, uh, it's just a matter of uh, getting a 7 millimeter in here. There's a couple screws in the back that hold this onto the bracket. There's one on this side as well. And then you can just turn them out. Now there's just this hose here going into the manifold. And so after that we just unplug it. and remove this little vacuum line and the MAP sensor's out. The MAP sensor out, we can now focus on the 10 millimeter bolts that hold the um, coil pack upper bolt. There's some in the back as well. On this side, make note that you've got the uh, the router for the spark plug also connected, being held on by this bolt. Okay, there's two nuts on studs that are holding this bracket from the back. I don't think you'll be able to see it from here, but actually you can get at this from underneath easier. So I've got this car up on ramps. Okay, so underneath the car now, and a little laser light. I want to point out. There's one of them there. The other one is right there. We've got a 13 millimeter box end on there. They are studs and they have a little hex top on them for a backup. And I'm hoping that they, the whole thing won't turn. We'll find out shortly. Okay, it's not turning. And that one's already loose. Let's try the other one. You can see it. Doing a bolt from the left side. There I'm on. There. Okay, those both came loose. Studs not turning. Now it's just a matter of working them off. Okay, as this left side nut comes off, take note there's also a router for the spark plugs that's on there. Okay, now we're turning the other one off by hand. Yeah, they didn't put anything on this one. This one's just doing duty only to hold the coil pack. Just gonna get this up and out of here. Okay, first of all, it's still plugged in here. There's one plug left on this corner here. So, 
get this unplugged. wire too because it's easy to miss wires. Okay, remember this, this came from the rubber duct here um, on the intake. Well it goes to the rear valve cover so I'm going to pull that out now and uh, it's a good idea to re kind of remember to put this back in before that coil pack goes back in. Here's some more evidence back here. I think you can see this uh, bolt backed out, one of the two mounting bolts for this EGR. So for some reason, you know, it shows that somebody was in there before and they didn't get that back in. I don't know if they cross-threaded it or what. I mean, it feels like it's solidly mounted, but that's going to be another issue we'll have to deal with as we try to remove that. Okay, so we're able to get in here with quarter drive 10 millimeter. I'm looking on that one that I pointed out that was only partially turned in. Let's go to the other one and see if we can get that one going. Okay, I found a route in through here. This is one of these ridiculous positions to be in. And of course here I don't have enough angle and torque to actually make an impact on this 10 millimeter. Okay, if you can see me in there. Look at Lewis. So all we really removed right there is just the nut for the transmission fluid dipstick bracket. Okay, we just use a screwdriver to push this bracket off of that last, um, now what appears to be a nutted stud. So we'll have to get another, get our 11 millimeter, 10 millimeter in there again, uh, deep well, and then turn the rest of that off. So I've got my my deep ball 10 millimeter now on that other nut. Okay, the one's off. Okay, there it goes. And the gasket fell down. And we're free of the exhaust gas recirculation valve. And there's a bracket. There's this bracket right here um, is also being used. This nut is also being used to uh, pull down our uh, plenum cover. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to take it out. And I'm also going to take this bracket out here, which is held on by another plenum bolt right here. Okay, let's start with the easy one first. Got a 15 millimeter bolt. The other end of this is actually welded onto a bracket, so you don't need a backup wrench. Yeah, it's correct. 13 on this corner. In fact, we'll just take this bracket right out now. With the bracket out, then we can actually get at the the other part of the stud that's holding down this corner. Just screw underneath here. Let's get this this holes holder clear one. Another one over here. And now we can see all the bolts. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Uh, I'm going to loosen them all to start with here. Get into the one. I'm just turning these off just a little bit. I've got a quarter inch drive, so that's how much torque is on these. Quarter inch, 10 millimeter. And all I'm doing is just taking them all just back a little bit. I don't like doing just one. I'm going to remove this one here on the bracket entirely. Over here, they've done something different. It's kind of a stud, so that looks like a 13 millimeter. 
time. This one right here is 13. They strayed from their 10 millimeter pattern. So we've got them all loose. I'm going to take this bracket out. Take out these front three mounting bolts. Please bear in mind the accessories that are coming along with this. This one's got the uh, basically a little a little rail piece that holds the wiring harness in. That's going to have to go back in there. I think the best way to, to keep these straight where they go is just leave them storm kind of like this. Let's maybe store it like that. And this one on the right corner is uh, also doing some duty here. And spark plug harness goes there. So here we are with a 15 millimeter. That combo is stud nut. Here's one small little detail on this end. There's a bracket that mounts a coolant line, and then there are several uh, two hoses that have to be pulled out, unclamped over here on the intake side. So, I've got a 13 millimeter uh, wrench on here. I'm going to break that, get the bracket loose, and then we'll take the hoses off. Okay, so it's a 13 millimeter nut on there. Okay, so just move this clamp, and then there's another one over here. Um, just get it off the pipe, and then separate it from this this coolant line here. Okay, we're at that point now. As we lift this plenum off of here, the only thing holding it is those hoses. So we're going to kind of work it in this direction a little bit, and kind of pry them off of there. So these uh, little bits of holes are proven to be uh, irritating to get off. So what I'm going to do is uh, turn a blow dryer on. I won't run this, kill your ears for long, but uh, we'll, just put that hole. we'll get that hose good and soft and hopefully be able to pull it off that rigid pipe. Yeah, the heat proved to work on that back piece, but it's, uh, it's not straight. It actually makes a 90. This other one in front even with the heat, it's just a short, like a two inch long straight piece. So it's coming off when I pull the uh, pull the intake, upper intake right off of there. It'll slip out of there then. Okay, so now as I lift the entire intake off, finally it pulls free. <laughs> and there's that little short section of hose. I mean, that's not gonna bend enough to pull it off of there. Up and off with this upper intake plenum and the multitude of components that are bolted on, passing over. Okay, that concludes part two. Now here's a little preview of part three, in which uh, we're going to begin by removing the alternator. Uh, then we'll take the alternator bracket off, remove some wiring, uh, unbolt the power steering pump, and uh, move it off to the side out of the way. Um, we'll unbolt and remove, pry out the fuel rail assembly, uh, cross over a water pipe, and, uh, and hose. And um, that'll be part three, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.